We're back on the Football Outside the Box podcast where we talk about the past, present, and future of the beautiful game. Starting it off today with, of course, it has to be that all-timer game between Man United and Liverpool. What a game that was. We have two people on opposite sides of the coin right across from each other today. I don't even know where to start. One sock, Man United, beating Liverpool in the last moment. What's your thoughts on the game? Uh, I wish it was the Champions League or, or something. You know, it, it is the FA Cup. Um, the, the importance of that has gone down. But nonetheless, it's it's Liverpool, our, our biggest rival. Probably the best FA Cup game I've ever watched in my lifetime, um, to be perfectly honest. Um, I mean, it was it was a cracker of a game. Two things I'm happy about. The atmosphere. You know, Old Trafford, for, for it being the biggest club stadium in, in England, the atmosphere is often very flat. I, I think it even falls behind the Emirates. I mean, Arsenal, of course, in the title race, so of course. But I think it falls even behind the Emirates now. But I think from what I've... I mean, from what I watched when I watched the game, um, saw and read online, probably the best atmosphere since the last game I went to, which was the last game before COVID against City when we did the double. Um, I just had to put it there that I was there, the last game before COVID. <laughs> um, and the other thing is, it, we we played with some with some style, you know, almost li- Liverpool like. Very intense, high tempo, fast transitions. I mean, why can we do this? Why can we do this against Everton? We got we got we got dominated on the ball by Everton um, a weekend ago. Why why can we do this every game? We can do it. He can he he can set us up well. So why can't we do it every single game? And even that, it only lasted like the first thirty minutes. Of course, it it's it gets tiring. And there are still flaws. Um, there was there was this famous clip where Sabosla has the whole pitch to himself, really, after a free kick. But yeah, I, I, that was good to see. But of course, the win is the biggest thing for me. Yeah, United fans were fuming about that on Twitter when when that happened. Um, it was insane. Theo, a tough, tough loss to take. What's your thoughts? Yeah, you're right. It's a tough loss to take, especially because we were so dominant, right? We were the dominant side for most of the game. Uh, in the first 30, uh, 20 minutes, Man United was actually more intense. They deserved the goal they scored at first. They created more chances. You could see Garnacho playing well. He was attacking the space, creating chances. Rashford the same. But then Liverpool uh, pick, picked it back up, you know, we... We imposed ourselves with more quality than intensity at first, and then we matched intensity levels. And I would say that that was a, a double-edged sword because that's what killed us in the end, the intensity that we put both in the first half and in the second half too. Kind of exhausted our players. So whenever we, we were playing the extra time, we were so gassed out that we couldn't offer any real threats to Man United in the, in the extra time. So at the end of the day, the intensity, the amount, the, the amount of games that we played in the past few days, they were crucial. They were the determinant point to Man United, I would say, getting the edge towards Liverpool. Not saying that as an excuse, for God's sake. Man United actually deserved to win. Uh, kudos to Man United. Because they just believed, you know. Uh, after Liverpool scored those two goals, in the dying minutes of the first half, that could have been a, an icebreaker. No, not an icebreak, like, like an iceberg. You know, an iceberg crashing uh, Man United streams, pretty much like the Titanic style, where yeah, one's like crying and he'll be dead right now. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it did. The, the, the second yeah, half, right? I, I, I could, all I could hear was was, was Liverpool fans singing. So it, in the second half, it, it was, it, it fell flat. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was, uh, that, that was our expectations and that was what happened in the end. Because uh, Liverpool was, uh, they were more more dominant for sure in the second half, but we didn't convert chances into goals. And Man United with Anthony, uh, Anthony out of everyone, Anthony got to be the one saving your asses. But it's fun. I mean, football, and in the right? first half, I the time too. I thought you guys were quite dominant. Um, I gotta we ask, were, but I, yeah, but I just felt like we we didn't have the gas, you know, to match Man United's uh, intensity. They were defending more than uh, they should in the extra time. I would say. Maybe they were afraid of Liverpool 
uh, attacking threats, but they were more intense. They were more, they had more energy to save. So they were more intense and that actually ended up being their, you know, in their fa- worked out in their favor in the end. Yeah, definitely. I, I have a couple of things to say about the game, but first I have to ask uh, Noah, it might seem at first glance that, you know, you are neutral in this situation and this was such a great game to watch as a neutral, but I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that you were not so neutral for this game. I think you had certain outcomes that you probably wanted that did in, end up coming true, specifically extra time. What were your thoughts on the game? Did, did it turn out how you wanted it as a not so neutral? You see, I guess hindsight will be the telling answer at the end of the day. It could go either one or two ways. And it was a question I was even going to ask you guys as well is, what direction do you think is going to go? Because is that a blow to Liverpool's confidence in the title race? Or is is are they going to come back and say, is that going to motivate them and push them? And it's almost like a wake-up call to say, yo, like we need to shape up for the rest of the season. And they have that extra focus in on the league. They also my don't guess, have to worry about again. Exactly. So that's exactly why my guess is the latter. Um, but... It could be either or, really. And knowing Klopp, knowing Liverpool, in how they've been in the last few seasons, you know, except last season more than any, but they they seem like the side that's going to just come back and bounce back and really take, you know, take their anger out on everyone else. But let's hope that's not the case. But as you said, extra time was the right play for me, at least. What do you guys think? Do you guys think it's going to be a bounce back for them or you think that's kind of like a blow to their confidence? Well, I can say, I, I think it would be just like Liverpool to bounce back. I don't see them not picking up after this. I, I see them picking up very much. But I think that, you know, extra time. A, a lot of Arsenal fans on my social media were loving the fact that this game went to extra time. They want to see the Liverpool players play the extra 30. They want to see them get the tired legs. They know the situation already where, you know, club is having to select players that are, you know, in many cases unknown. They're young. They're having to come up because he in he has no choice in some cases. That being said, I have to give a lot of credit to Liverpool in this game because I thought, like you said, Theo, they looked dominant in the second half. I thought they were the better team in the first half of extra time. Um, I would even say... You know, throughout the majority of the game, I would have expected them to win by the time the final whistle blew, uh, just based on how the two teams are playing. But I have to give them so much credit because this is the umpteenth time this season that we've seen them play with guys who have numbers above 50 on their shirt. And they look so good. You know, they look comfortable as a team. Uh, in a way that you don't normally see teams with so many youngsters uh, playing. And I think that's a huge credit to them. Well, the youngsters that came out on top were from from Man United. That's what matters, really. Um, that's what matters in the end, for sure. Yes. But, well, I, I I will say, though, before, before you go, I just want to say, I have to shout out, uh, there's a couple men on Man United that I have to shout out. Uh, but one of them, before you know, before I... I'll let you go, is Garnacho. I've always been saying, from the moment I saw this man come to the fray uh, and start playing for Man United, I have been of the opinion that he is absolute garbage. I mean, he has been gassed by United fans since coming onto the scene, and I've just never seen it. I look at this boy and I think, what does he do good? I don't but know how you don't see it, to be honest. But He really has matured in the last few months in terms of his decision-making and his overall gameplay. He really looked good um, against Liverpool. I would say he was probably United's man of the match. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I will say I did echo that statement maybe two years ago when he first burst onto the scene. Um, yeah, we... we Fans did gas him up, but it was, it wasn't anything special. I felt um, definitely nowhere near. Um, I don't know if I should say, it, but but Greenwood's potential 
when he first came on. I mean, Greenwood was special. I didn't see that from Granacho at first. But yeah, like you said, he, he has matured more. Um, the thing I like about him is that he, he can run for days. Um, every fan will love that. No matter, no matter how, how good of a player you are, if you can run and play and give it all for your team, uh, that's really, that's the bare minimum that the fans ask for. Um, so yeah, I'm credit to him and let's see how, how he develops. One sec, who is, uh, who is the youngster that you recommend the fans to look at for Manu? Like from the youth team or? From... No, as in just out of all the youngsters like Diallo, Manu, Garnacho, who is one that stands out for you in your opinion? I've always liked Ahmad. I mean, it, it might sound like a bandwagon after you score, but I mean, there's a reason why we paid up to 37 million pounds for that guy. The, the guy, he can lack physicality. Of course, he, he's a he's a relatively small guy. But you can tell from the way he, I mean, even that finish, I thought he he, he messed it up. But watching watching it back, it looks like he shimmy, shimmies a defender on purpose. At, at first, I thought he, he miscontrolled the ball. But looking back, maybe that was on purpose. That guy is a special talent. I wish he's given more time. And, and Ten Hag said after the game, um, he's unlucky that he hasn't been getting enough time that his training performance deserves. I'm like, you're the guy who determines his playing time. What you, You're saying it as if you're a fan from looking outside. So, and I, I know why he doesn't play. He is not as disciplined or astute defensively, but he, he nicked the ball off twice for both of the goals in extra time. So maybe he's he's improving on that front. So I, I hope he can, this could be the turning point for him. It's been three years since he arrived at the club. Four, three years, yeah, because he arrived in the winter of 2021. I I really thought that I really thought that once Liverpool's third goal went in, I thought it was over. I yeah. thought they were gonna just shut down the game, you know, maybe even get another one as United, you know, would inevitably push forward. Uh there's one man that we spoke about last week who will be Definitely thanking the Lord above and his lucky stars. The fact that United ends up winning this game, and that is Marcus Rashford. Because football is a game about narratives. And a lot of the time, we know that final score analysis comes into play. But Marcus Rashford missed two, or was it three? I think two massive, massive chances. And if United don't win this game, he is the man that would have gotten all of the negative headlines. He did end up scoring off of... who? I don't remember who passed the ball to him. Oh, McTominay. Yeah. It was a brilliant pass, by the way, because it looked like the wrong pass. But if you saw the defender actually went just slightly for the wide pass, so it opened yep. him up a little bit. Yep. He scores it. And to me, that is the making of a top quality player. He missed two huge chances. It didn't matter. He scored the one that mattered. A huge credit to Marcus Rashford for that. Speaking it's of the guy who made the assist, though. Sorry, Theo. I, I want to ask you straight up. Speaking of that guy who made the assist, he scored the goal as well. Scott McTominay. Theo, do you think that this guy deserves some more credit, bro? Well, I would say he does, Noah. Uh, but what, what impresses me about Scott McTominay is that the simplicity in which he plays, you know? He's not the most skillful player by far. I would say if you look at the Man United squad, maybe he's more skillful than Maguire, <laughs> than Lindelof. There's no. a, a far more... <laughs> there's a lot more guys who are more skillful with the ball than he is like dribbling wise he's a great guy because uh he never gives up and he just puts in so much intensity in every single match like you were saying one talk about man united playing everton i feel like mctominay is the kind of guy who's gonna put the same amount of intensity and passion into every single game right it might be a squad problem it might might be the thing that we're at, where one or two other players are not gonna put in the same intensity but I just feel like Scott McTominay is always going to be there for the squad. He's always going to put in, he's always going to put in the work, the intensity, and he's always going to be the player who runs box to box, right? He's going to help out defending, and he's going to be there to support attacking too. 
he had another chance to score in the extra time as well. He, he was supposed to score the fourth goal uh, in his lighting tackle where he, he tried to score. So I just like the guy because he's simple. He, he does what he should do. He does it, he does it effectively. He supports the team. He's not the kind of guy who's going to have a big ego or demand things for himself. He's just going to do the work and try to get a result for his teammates at the end of the day. I just feel like he's not as much of a good uh, like defender for the, the part of the role that a CDM should be more concerned with, which is defending or protecting the, the defensive line. I feel like he's a little too immature at times, or he doesn't know where to be positioned or when to tackle, when to wait when to support a teammate. I feel like uh, some of the, the some of the decision-making uh, should be uh, polished, you know, for him in the future. I feel like he does have great potential. But I just like his simplicity for the time being. I like how he supports both uh, the defensive system as well as the attacking system. But right now he just lacks a little bit of the, the, the defensive awareness and the decision-making when it comes to the defensive plays. McTominay feels yeah. like the kind of guy who, if he was managed by Ferguson, he would be putting up, like, Zidane performances week in week out. Just feels like that type All of All right, let's I, calm down. <laughs> like I mean, Aaron Fletcher. <laughs> he, I mean, there, he can put in a Zidane like performance, but he's just not consistent. If he were to put in that kind of performance, if he had the ability to put that kind of performance every single week, then we will be talking about it differently. I just feel. He's definitely not a defensive midfielder. He doesn't have the acumen, um, like you said, Theo. He should be like Frank Lampard. Dash it into the box late on. He's got a great ball striking ability. He's not as clinical as as Frank Lampard um, used to be. I mean, he missed a, the, a big chance against Liverpool. He missed the header against Tottenham in the, in the last minute of the game. Um, but that's just his best abilities. And I just don't see that being available that position being available to to him at any of the top clubs i mean who, who is he getting in over you know he's not getting in over bruno fernandez he's not getting in over um de bruyne or or roger or, or kovacic um or odegaard or you know i mean maybe liverpool need that i don't know um but club likes three three men midfield so might not work that way so he will do very well in a mid-table team where there's less expectations of him being consistent every week and he can chip in with 10 goals a season like he has done this season already. Maybe an Aston Villa. Yeah. And replace I don't Joe. know, man. I was looking at him for us and saying he could have been a great at least second string for that number eight player, like he said, arriving late into the box. It just looks like that's his style. He just seems like a system player at this point. And... If he plays that system, we have a whole different look on him. We have a whole different perception, a whole different narrative. That's the way that's I'm thinking. You, I think that's can, an interesting perspective. You can have him yeah. for 40 mil. We'll make use of him, just like how we did with Havertz. Mm. You guys are going crazy for comparing him to both Sidan and Lumford. It's just an incredible... <laughs> I, I, agree agree that kind of I think you're crazy so, for that too, bro. So, so, so for me, it always seemed like when Ferguson got his hands on a otherwise crap player, he would turn them into somebody who put up performances for some unknown reason. I don't know what it was, but those days are over. Uh, guys, we've we got some stuff to cover outside of the FA Cup, but just quickly to wrap up on this FA Cup discussion. I know we didn't get to talk about the amazing magic of the cup comeback from Coventry who find themselves in the semifinals. But we have United versus Coventry, City versus Chelsea. Just to go around the room real quick, who do you guys think is going to contest the final and who's going to come out on top? I mean full disrespect when I say no disrespect, but I'm very glad we got we got Coventry. Um, that's the biggest lie in football. No disrespect. You're gonna be giving full disrespect after that sentence. Um, I, I I think the final really will be United against Chelsea. Chelsea are the the only team really this season that have given City trouble. You know, City needed uh, they they scored in in eighty eighty sixth minute I think in in the league um, when they when they drew one one at Stamford Bridge they struggled. Um, it was a four four goal fest. I I really do think it'll be a Chelsea United. Final. 
Oh, you forgot about Liverpool and Villa. You forgot about Liverpool and Villa giving City trouble as well. well yeah, I, I, meant, I, meant both, I, meant, I meant both matches uh, in, in both games that they've played. Villa, okay. I know they beat City, but um, you know, at home, we're still yet to see. So United, United Chelsea final and Rashford 90 plus four winner. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not getting that ahead yet. But what do you think, Theo? Who's going to contest the final and who's going to win? Well, uh, just a quick thing about Rashford. Uh, it seems like for for Rashford, uh, football is a is a game of moments, right? In a moment, he scores a banger, and then the next moment, he can't control oh, the ball or he can he, he miss shoots. Uh, you know, he mistakes a shot. It's crazy, but uh, I hope he does well in the future. But I would say Man United for sure. They're going to go into the final. They're going to play City. That's going to be an. Inc- Tense and create like crazy matches to, to see. I feel like City is actually gonna beat Chelsea this time around. They they were more more dominant against Chelsea. Uh, Chelsea, in my view, they had the clearer chances in the Premier League match. But I feel like City are gonna come out more prepared now. Pochettino he was kind of like arguing with the uh, Chelsea fans, kind of demanding them to trust him. I don't feel like that's the way to induce or receive trust from your fan base. I feel like it can create more tension, actually, because well, to me, it feels like it kind of feels like Chelsea fans are always going to be there supporting the team. Right. And when a guy like Pochettino kind of says the opposite as if they were not supporting them, I would be mad as a fan. So I don't know. I feel like they're going to be like in turbulent waters now. I feel like Chelsea are not going to have the strength uh, required to beat City. I feel like City are going to easily move on to the finals and they're going to play United. Which is going to be interesting for us, Noah, because we do want to see uh, City moving up as far as they can. So they get the tired legs, like Christian mentioned, they get exhaustion. Maybe, uh, I mean, I don't want to say that knock on wood, but maybe somebody else gets, you know, a crucial guy like Haaland. Is not fit anymore to play for the rest of the season. Who knows? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't wish anything bad against the guy, but anything can happen the more matches you play, especially during this, this type of the during this the, the final moments of the season, I would say. So I want to see City moving up. I feel like they have the strength to move up, and it's going to be an interesting game against United if they move up to the final. Hey, that's like one of those no disrespect moments, you know? You say, yes. I wouldn't wish anything bad on anyone, but... I hope, I hope, Man, City fans, I hope <laughs> Man City fans don't get mad at me, man. <laughs> no, what do you think is going to happen? I think that we're going to be treated to a Manchester derby in the final. And to me, I know once like you said that Man United have been giving City the troubles this season and, you know, in the past. But to me, it's still a David versus Goliath kind of match. And in this scenario, I'm going to have to pick Goliath and see City win it all, to be honest. As much as I hate to see them pick up another trophy in this annoying run of seasons after seasons where they just rack up trophies but it, it it's just it just seems like the obvious pick at this choice at this moment well yeah I, i'm gonna agree with you and be boring i'm gonna say it's a manchester derby final city come out on top well That's last my- thing last thing on that liverpool were the, were the obvious choice two days ago but look what happened <laughs> that's true that's true i guess they were still <laughs> that's right as but- is the magic of the fa cup that's I mean, true. I, that's I, very true. It, we might think it should be Wolves in this semi final. Anyway, I wasn't so sure. Just, just one more comment uh, before you move on, Christian. I wasn't so sure before the match, one thought, but especially after the first time, after we scored those two goals in the final minutes, I was so sure that Liverpool was going to win. And then actually, I was so frustrated when Anthony scored that goal. And actually, Rashford was supposed to, was supposed to right. score the game winning goal at the 95 minute. But that that just proves that it proves us that football is not a, a fair game for the most part, and anything can happen, man. Even Coventry cruel. can go on and beat Man United. Who knows? It is cruel. Oh, yeah. you imagine. <laughs> so, guys, we have also the draw for the Champions League quarterfinals in front of us. It looks like four great games are about to happen, and I personally I love how there's been a change in discourse about the Champions League as a whole in terms of this year's competition. Remember when the round of 16, even in the group stages, but from the group stages to the round of 16, everybody, everybody on my social media, and I'm assuming everybody else, was saying how the Champions League is boring, 
There's no good teams in the Champions League. All the games are boring. It doesn't have the vibe anymore. Same thing they said at I, the round of 16. No. I, no, I will say, round of 16 was boring. But the quarterfinals and the semifinals are looking like a cracker. They're looking good. But well, to me, that's what happens when you have a not so exciting round of 16. You get all the big boys who you expect to be in the quarterfinals. You get them there. So now we have some real good matches coming up. We, I, I need to get everybody's sort of prediction for what's going to happen. Yeah, just to make it clear, I feel like we had three great matches in the round of 16. Arsenal and Porto, Atletico Madrid and Inter, and Real Madrid and Leipzig. Leipzig actually put in a, put on a, a great fight against against the 13-time champion, 14-time 14 14 time if I'm not mistaken. So that was interesting to see. Like maybe the the David can sometimes beat the Goliaths, you know, or they can put in some some great fight. Yeah, I agree. But with you. Uh, just I to keep it short, about the, the the quarterfinals, I felt like it was almost the perfect draw to an extent. You know, uh, City and Madrid. That's gonna be the match. That's gonna be the the final. I would say. Uh, Atletico Madrid and Dortmund. That's also a very fair game. I only wish that Arsenal was playing Barcelona. A uh, rematch of the 06 final, Noah. Maybe the Bayern the final. Playing, right? Maybe. Who knows? I, I don't ex I don't see that coming, but maybe. And Bayern playing uh PSG a few years back. They they faced each other in the final suit. That, that in my view would be the, the perfect draw. But I'm I'm happy. I'm happy as one could be with the draw. I feel like all the matches are fair, they're very uh balanced. And we're going to see some interesting matches, man. I wanna, I wonder what you guys think about it. So, so I'll I tell you what. We only, we only have a few minutes left. So let's just, let's just go through all the games real quick. And let's get some brief thoughts and predictions from everybody. I want to start, of course, with Arsenal versus Bayern Munich. Now, a lot of people remember that the last two times they've played, Arsenal lost 5-1. But what a lot of people forget is that it's actually the last three times they played that Arsenal got beaten 5-1. Not just the last two. Yep. It looks like it's going to be different this time. I think Arsenal has a chance to beat Bayern Munich. This is the most level these two teams have been since we've seen them play before. I think Arsenal can win. If I'm being honest in my prediction, I think Bayern Munich comes out on top. Well, I mean, I've seen a lot of people making fun of Arsenal for, for John Bayern, of, of course, the 10-2. But I don't see this as a level competition. Arsenal are a level or two higher than, than Bayern, in my opinion, especially this season. Of course, the Champions League factor comes into play. Arsenal are playing in the in the quarterfinals for the first time in, in what, 14 years? Whereas Bayern have made it to this stage nine times out of the last 10 seasons. That could play a factor, but just in terms of quality alone... I, Arsenal, Bayern haven't been that impressive, whereas Arsenal have been very impressive. Um, I, I think Noah, Noah's pretty confident, to be to be honest. I you mean, I am you? confident, more confident than I have ever been about this fixture. But as you said, it's the pedigree, it's the Champions League, it's just different. Like It's a different competition, a different mentality. And, you know, as you said, that experience in the quarterfinals before is going to play a factor, you know. Sometimes I wonder, Arsenal look impressive, right? But is it because we haven't seen Arsenal look this impressive in so long? Which is why maybe our perception is a little blurred. And then because we're so used to Bayern being so good, for them to drop off this one year, maybe we're looking on them like, oh, they're not that good this year. But in reality, the actual levels in an absolute or in a vacuum situation is actually, you know, closer than, than we think. Yeah. Remember how Bayern looked earlier this season, you know? They're, they're still beating teams, like, 8-1. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're not, like, they've not sunk that low. They just right. did it. You can't make a prediction, ago. Noah. But, Theo, what's your prediction? I, I could never make Noah make a prediction on this. Yeah. <laughs> I know Thank Noah's you. scared of... <laughs> I know you're scared of Harry Kane, Noah. I know you're scared of him. I'm actually but... not. Bro, Saliba, <laughs> I know he has a good record against us, but... It's a new backline, bro. The Saliba's played him a, a couple of times now, and he's had him on lock, bro. Maybe so. And, uh, so. 
if you look if you look at uh Bayern's last matches in the Champions League, they were not too exciting against Copenhagen. They they drew uh, they drew at home, and they lost to Lazio. So in the last three matches, they drew once, they lost one, and they won once. So I, I would say that you have a chance, Noah. And I, I, I'm looking at this match with the same lenses as one sock right now. I feel like Arsenal is the stronger side. Uh, they are putting a great, uh, great fight uh, for the Premier League title uh, in comparison to Bayern, who's uh, 10 points behind Leverkusen right now, which is a shock in all of our opinions. So I would say that at the moment, Arsenal is more strong and I would say even more prepared to go on and move up to the semifinals. But it's a, a it's a two match draw, right? So anything can happen in those two matches. Because when you look at a season, you're looking at 38 matches, or even more if you look at uh, domestic cups and all international cups. But that's just a two game match, right? You play home and away, and anything can happen. We know that Bayern is a strong side, but I'm expecting Arsenal to win, and I want Arsenal to win so they move up as long as, as far as they can and they get those tire legs. That's gonna help us out. Yo, I can't believe that the draw ended up the way it did for real though, because it just feels like it went the the it really surely felt like it went in order from the best team, second best, third best, fourth best, fifth, like all in yeah, that line. Literally, how is I it swear. that twice? How is it twice in a row? Maybe I'm wrong with maybe Arsenal, PSG, or you want to swap those. But how is it that again Dortmund? No, like Christian, I know it's your side to <laughs> happy still. But Dortmund get PSV and Atletico now back to back, bro. It's like the best job. To be, that could to have be gotten. honest, I actually don't think you see. I know we can sort of rank teams in terms of weakness and strength and stuff like that, but I don't necessarily think Atletico is the best tie for Dortmund. I actually would have thought, you know, maybe a team like Barca would have been. You would better. have rather Barca than for, Atletico for, for Dortmund at yeah, least hundred percent because. Because I, I know Barca just clapped Atletico at the weekend. But, I mean, when you look at sort of the the ball that Simeone has his team playing, you know what they're set up to do. They're, they're a very strong team physically. You know what I mean? And they they set up for a very particular type of game. I don't know if Dortmund can manage that because Dortmund is very much... Like I said, Rashford is a moments player. Dortmund seems to, especially this season, live off of moments. Like, they are so bad at stringing two or three passes together. And if you don't control the game like that against a team like Atletico, they're going to kill you. And, you know, a team like Barca, for example, I would have thought would have been maybe, you know, more susceptible to, if they catch Dortmund on a good day, on one of Dortmund's good days, I think Barca is a team that Dortmund could have beaten. But Atletico is just such a strong, solid, and consistent team, you feel like, under, under Simeone. So I was a little upset, actually, to get Atletico. There's no team I could have chosen from that seven that I would have been like, yeah, I want to play this team. I think Dortmund is the weakest team out of the eight. Um, but we shall see. Everybody's saying Atletico is going to go through. I can't make a prediction. I don't know what's gonna happen, <laughs> but uh, that means, sorry. So, so we only have a couple minutes left. Uh, let's just run through real quick the games. Let's just go like a, a a one or two sentences on the other ties and what's gonna happen. Real Madrid City. I gotta say, City go through. What about you guys? I'll, I'll, I'll Madrid. Say, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll Madrid. say Real Madrid. Yeah, I think I'll Madrid, bro. Honest. I know Madrid yeah. kind of missing that sh the striker, but I mean they're still getting their goals, bro. When I'm I saw confident. when I saw Madrid versus Leipzig, and I saw them draw City, I said City gonna go through. Just how they played against Leipzig, they looked under the cash. Anyway, Barca PSG. I'm not sure Barca. who to pick here. I'm going for Barca. It's tough, mm. but I think P I think Mbappe gonna just bring the magic, Mbappe, man. That's what I'm saying too, like. Again, it's a moments type thing. If Mbappe has the type of performance that we know he's capable of. I can just see it in the stars. A last minute Mbappe winner, like streaking through beautiful goal. I can see of it course. in the stars. Of course. Yeah, in the I, can team, see, in I can see a Lewandowski winner too in the last minute. So I'll go with Barca. <laughs> I don't like Mbappe Mbappe versus I don't like Barca. Remember, he's about to go to Madrid, you know? He's about yeah. to go to Madrid. Yeah. It would just be... Prophecy. It would be the prophecy. Yeah, I mean, one one thing one thing Barca have against Mbappe is they've got two very very quick and, and strong defenders on the on the right hand side where Mbappe will line up against them. 
I, I do believe Paris Saint Germain will will proceed too, and and I I hope for a, a new winner this time. We don't we don't want City. We don't want Real Madrid. We don't want Arsenal. I mean, I don't want Arsenal. <laughs> yeah, but Arsenal would be a new winner. You mean they don't, don't want Bayern? <laughs> anyway, guys, we, we we went deep into a couple of things today. There's I know there's a ton of other stuff to talk about, but I think we touched on the most important things. That's all we have time for today. Guys, thanks for tuning in as always. We hope you enjoyed your time with us. Remember to subscribe, to leave comments, and share with your friends. Follow us on social media at FOTBPod. Don't forget to leave a review, rating, and most importantly, don't forget to turn on those notifications. Join us again next time as we discuss the highly anticipated upcoming Premier League action. Thanks again as always. See you then.